Hi everybody, uh, welcome again to the HN Vlog. Don't fear failure. As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. For the last few years, we've been working with a lot of organizations, especially NGOs, and a lot of them are funded by uh, what we call development agencies, USAID, uh, GIZ, and there's there's many more. And, and and what I've learned is, you know, a lot of those organizations are created are, are government funded by their own country, so taxpayer basically. So I'm not teaching you anything. Um, on that on that side so so a lot of those organizations set up shop uh in different countries and you know they, they use some of the funds uh to develop programs so the 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 goal at least on paper the goal of those uh development agency is to develop in international cooperation with countries so they work mostly with foreign governments um um, and what they, they, they're supposed to focus on is, is sustainability in a development world. Um, but what I've learned in, in, in the last few years is a lot of time, and I'll give you an example. Let's say USAID uh, trying to bring some solution uh, in the agricultural sector. And they come up with a fund, a million dollar fund, uh, to, to solve a problem in the agricultural sector. Um, what they're going to do is, you know, a lot of time is bring their own consultants from the States. So they're going to look for an organization in the States that can do an assessment or whatever the case they need. And then if they have a solution they're going to use, they're also going to bring that solution uh, from the States uh, also. Uh, and we've applied to a lot of different funds from those uh, development agencies. And I was very surprised why are they not working with local technology? You know, um, but you know, logically it makes sense. You know, they 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 using government fund, their own government fund. You know, uh, funded by taxpayer from their countries, so they're not here necessarily to develop uh, the private sector or the 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 country they're cooperating with. They are there to you know uh, mostly bring solution but bring solution from their own country because at the end of the day they have to work with companies uh from their country because you know they have to utilize their taxpayer money efficiently uh but the question now occur is are they really bringing the impact or the sustainable development impact that they're supposed to in the country they're cooperating with so if you're spending a million dollar but most of that money goes back to your country of operation, uh, or, or you know the the the, the country who funded that um, that program, is that really beneficial for the country you're operating in? Um, you know, is that really bringing value? But that's not the real case of this uh, uh, vlog. And uh, the the second, you know, the second question I, I ask myself is. Why don't Africa have some uh, development agencies around Africa? Uh, and I don't think we need to copy the same model. That traditional you know, development agencies that exist already are not efficient. There's a lot of money wastage, if you can call it like this. Uh, I don't think that model can be applied for African countries. But I'll give you an example. You know, one of the biggest challenge African companies have is expanded, expanding their, their, their reach in other African countries, right? So if, if I'm opening shop in another country, I have to build a network, I have to get the connection, I have to understand the ecosystem, um, I have to get the, 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 the rules and regulation, find the right lawyer, find this, find that. You know, it's a lot of legwork in the beginning and it's very expensive. So what happened is, 
most comp most companies cannot afford to expand because just the expansion plan, just the learning curve alone, will will be very expensive. How can we make that learning curve um, less painful? And I believe that you know developing uh, African agency, especially for countries that are landlocked, uh, is the key. So they can help their private sector to expand in other countries. But the way they do that is number one. They don't need to build a whole structure in that country and do the the, the, the same way development agency uh, do. They can work with the actual embassy. You know, you have one or two guys that their whole purpose is to build that ecosystem uh, wherever they are operating, build that network, and they share that information with companies that have a potential to expand. That would be your first case scenario. Yeah, so the second key point I would say is allocate a fund to do events, uh, to improve the networking on the ground in the country of operation, you know, to, to, to build bridges between different entity, uh, chamber of commerce and all those things. And it doesn't have to be a big fund, right? It, it can be a small fund, um, a ballpark. I mean, it shouldn't be a, more than a hundred thousand, you know. So, so when 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 uh, there is events happening in that particular country, uh, we can bring entities or, or the private sector fly them in in those countries to meet, you know, other private sector in that particular country. So let, let me give you a a perfect example. Of course, I, I use the, the, the you know I'm I'm from Rwanda. I'm trying to open up in Zimbabwe. Uh, the embassy in Zimbabwe, you know, um, organize some some event or, or there's events happening um, on the ground um, in that particular in that particular country, and they fly in a bunch of uh, uh, companies that could be beneficial to those events, you know, to showcase um, the technology for 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 Rwanda from Rwanda and then see what type of partnership and all those things that can happen. Uh, for that particular um, country and then you know so we can export and be able to export and it can happen vice versa same thing if I'm from from uh, another country Zimbabwe and there's event in Rwanda you know I set up a, a, a fund to bring in uh, startups or, or companies that can do business in that particular country that has technology that the government or the local entity can be interested in and, and those things can be very, very beneficial, you know, for, for any country. You know, it facilitates operation, it builds trust much quicker, which is one of the biggest problems with partnership, trust. You know, now you have government involved that are trying to build a bridge that are recommended by, you know, other entity or other government. Uh, so it's much faster to build that trust because when you start up and you go on your own, trying to figure out, you know, who am I going to work with, who am I going to partner with, and all those things. You don't know uh, who you're dealing with. You know, somebody is interesting, you have to do background check, you have to check recommendation, references, and all those things. And that's also time-consuming, money-consuming, and all those things. So it could be very, very interesting in that particular part. stakeholder that can help anyone set up shop in a particular country uh, so for example a list of uh, lawyers a list of good accounts for startups for, for established company uh, those are very important I can't tell you how many times it's so hard to go in asking people questions about you know what companies or what account is good and to cater to startups and, uh, and all that. Having that list could, could, could save a lot of time also. You know, and, 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 and having the different stakeholders, for example, 
who's in charge of the Chamber of Commerce? You know, who, who what, what other um, co-sharing space we can find? There's a whole list of, of, of uh, stakeholder that should be available uh, on the embassy level or whatever level you want to call it. Um, that can be established uh, by a, a development board from that country. And those, those are the three key points I want to share. And by the way, I uh, you know, got, got lucky, uh, got an upgrade, so I had to make that video. Um, just, uh, just to make something interesting and, and a different visual. That was a long flight, guys. But uh, I, I, I truly hope anybody out there, you know, listening to this and having a good idea, uh, thinking that this is a good idea, you know, trying to look into this. That could tremendously change the game for startups, uh, especially startups that, uh, you know, that really want to expand, have an interesting technology, but just don't have the proper structure to do so, or the, the, the proper um, financing to do so. Uh, you know, and, and having all that structure, that ecosystem, can really lower the risk of failure also. Thanks.